Good evening, everyone. This is Dr. Vineet Sahgal, and welcome to the image-based session in ophthalmology part six. So, hope you would have enjoyed the image-based session till now. We have taken five sessions, and we have basically covered more than hundred most important images in ophthalmology. So, in this session, I would be basically dealing with some images which are concerned with the trauma. Also, we would be taking some images which are there, which can be asked from the lens and the cataract. So hope you would enjoy this session. If you want to basically subscribe for the Unacademy Plus program, you can go back and download the Unacademy Learning app from the iOS Store and Play Store. Use my code Ophthal10 to unlock the platform, and then you can basically practice the questions there. There are more than thirty-four thousand questions there. Then, if you want, you can go with the Plus program and basically enroll for the NEET PG Season One or the FMG Test Batch, which has already started. if you want to go for the 3 month course you would get 1 month extra free of cost and there is limited time offer where you would get the iconic subscription which have the both an academy learning app as well as prep ladder in never to seen price so you have got a lots of lots of discount on the iconic subscription also if you just want to see the live classes you can go with the plus subscription so with this i would be starting my session today that is the image based session in ophthalmology So first of all, I would show you this image. So tell me, what can you appreciate in this image? Let's say this patient has come to the OPD. He is having a decreased vision, and he says that this decreased vision is from birth. He is also saying that he is having basically a congenital condition which has caused a decrease in the vision. He has anomalies in the eye. in the anterior segment as well as the posterior segment can you appreciate what is this patient suffering from so if you can see in this area the patient has inferior nasal deficiency of iris so basically the iris is not formed inferior nasally i call it iris coloboma okay so also if you can appreciate this is a key shaped pupil so i call it key shaped pupil so remember whenever the word coloboma is used coloboma per se means that there is a defect or there is a there is a place in the eye which is not formed it can be your eyelid coloboma it can be your iris coloboma it can be your fundus coloboma it can be your optic nerve coloboma so colobomas can be anywhere in the eye in this picture you are seeing the iris coloboma then this is a picture where the patient ha has a iridodialysis what is the meaning of the word dialysis dialysis basically means the funda is that there is dialysis what is the meaning of the word dialysis in ophthalmology so there is a separation from the root of the tissue so here the separation is of the root of iris so if you can see in this area there is basically disinsertion of the iris so i can write it here there is a disinsertion of iris and if you can appreciate if i see this area only the brown area that i am seeing i can call this as a d shaped pupil also i can call it a d shaped pupil also okay so iridodialysis which can be seen in any intraocular surgery it can be seen after a blunt trauma it can be seen after a perforated trauma this basically tells you a d shaped pupil okay then you can have a iridodialysis like this also so the same type of feature is there but in this picture you are seeing the patient is having iridodialysis iridodialysis plus the patient is also having a mature cataract so in these image based questions in ophthalmology session you can have the best of the images these images are not the images taken from the google these are the real time images of my patient so if you can appreciate there is a disinsertion of the root of iris from its periphery okay so this is also a d shaped pupil with a mature cataract okay so this is also a picture of d shaped pupil but here you are having three findings what are the these three findings 
first if you can appreciate so there can be multiple findings in a single image and they can ask you what are the findings in the image seen and then they can give you a mcq record regarding this so the findings in this picture you can see that there are scars in the cornea multiple scars that you are seeing in the cornea they are called radial keratotomy plus if you can see this whitish structure there is a nuclear cataract also and last but not the least as i have shown you in the earlier two images the patient here also is having a iridodialysis okay so see the iris disinserted from its root in the periphery okay so these are the three findings which you are getting in this patient okay then this is another image which is showing you a spotter of bergmister papilla so what is actually a bergmister papilla remember whenever they basically use the word papilla papilla means optic nerve head so you have a glial tissue which is there which you can see at the level of optic nerve head can you see this whitish glial tissue here so some part of optic nerve head is basically covered with this glial tissue this is basically called a bugmister papilla okay chal here if you can appreciate in this picture they would say you that the patient has got a blunt trauma and a finding like this so the finding that you can see in the lens capsule if you can appreciate this ring pigmented ring this is basically called this brownish ring which you are seeing this is called voschius ring okay this is called voschius ring chal then we have a picture of the x rays we have the anterior posterior views as we l as well we have the lateral views so if you can appreciate this this opaque structure okay so there is a something opaque structure which is inside okay and here you can see this is near the lateral wall okay so what is this this is basically a patient having a intraocular foreign body so the variety of questions they can ask from from this is if let's say this is a intraocular foreign body okay which investigation is contraindicated so first of all they can ask which investigation is contraindicated the most common type of the foreign body that is seen in eye is the after a chisel and hammer injury okay after a chisel and hammer injury so it can be iron foreign body so the con investigation which is contraindicated is mri the second question they would ask you that if you basically decide to keep the foreign body inside and do not operate it okay maybe the patient is not in a good systemic condition let's say the patient the foreign body is near the macula or optic nerve or removal of this foreign body can cause the total damage to the eye if your basic aim is to prevent any sudden catastrophic problem in the patient then what is the serial investigation that you would do to basically see what is the serial toxicity in the eyeball can anyone tell me what is the investigation that you would do in the cases to see the serial retinal toxicity of a intraocular foreign body so i would use a serial erg scans electroretinogram so if the electroretinogram we have the electroretinogram waves if we have the a wave and the b wave so if this there is increase in the latency and decrease in the amplitude so this means that there is a serial retinal toxicity which is going on so i would basically then plan to remove the foreign body okay so a serial erg is basically used in these cases chalo then the foreign body can be embedded in the conjunctiva it can be there in the bulbar conjunctiva it can be there in the palpebral conjunctiva sometimes what happens is that the foreign body can be there in the junction of the bulbar and the fornix conjunctiva 
bulbar and the palpebral conjunctiva i call it fornesis so that's why if you have got a injury or a foreign body which is you are not able to locate it from your slit lamp what you do is you basically avert the eyelid what i call is i call it double aversion of the eyelid why i do a double aversion basically i want to see if the foreign body is not there in the any of the fornesses so this is the next picture where you are seeing a hyper mature saline cataract so i told you the various stages of the senile cataract from the lamellar separation to the incipient cataract then we have the immature cataract we have the mature cataract and the last stage is hyper mature senile cataract so whenever you have a hyper mature senile cataract this is such a dense cataract you cannot see inside if you can appreciate there is a wrinkling of the anterior capsule also seen here so i call it hyper mature senile cataract of the sclerotic variety of the sclerotic variety we have another type of hyper mature senile cataract where because of the so much increase in the density the lens basically the nucleus settles in the bottom when the nucleus settles in the bottom i call it morgagnian cataract now you would ask me sir what is the basic problem of the hyper mature senile cataract whether it is a sclerotic and morgagnian because of the so much increase in the density of the nucleus of the density of the cataract this sometimes can basically these antigens can basically leak into the anterior chamber and cause a inflammation there this is basically called a lens induced glaucoma which is a type of a secondary open angle glaucoma okay or we can say the patient may get into a phacolytic glaucoma that is the main problem with the hyper mature senile cataract then in this picture you are seeing a hyper mature senile cataract plus you can see there is a deficiency of iris here so the patient may have got a corneal perforation or the patient may have got any uh, intraocular surgery done before the cataract surgery so this is a deficiency of the iris you can also see in this patient okay then this is a picture of a posterior subcapsular cataract what we have done is we have basically taken a slit lamp picture and in the slit lamp picture if you can see this is the slit the image which we are seeing from the cornea and if you can see this is the lens in the lens this is the anterior part this is the nuclear part and this is the posterior subcapsule if i make it in the cross section you have the opacity just anterior to the posterior capsule i call it posterior subcapsular cataract it is characteristically seen after the steroids or even after the radiation why they basically cause a problems because let's say if the patient goes into a bright light or he, if he is uh, driving and some a uh, vehicle is coming in front of him so what would be happen is there would be would be a constriction of the iris and because of the constriction of iris there is no space of the light to go it would go from the center of the pupil and it would basically focused on the posterior subcapsular opacity and this would cause the diffraction of the light okay so the quality of image would not be very good in this patient that's why a posterior subcapsular cataract or even a posterior polar cataract these patients have difficulty in the night driving and also when they go into a bright sunlight okay then this is a picture courtesy my my director dr kamal sir so if you can see here this is a anterior lenticular opacity these anterior lenticular opacities can be of because of the variety of reasons the anterior lenticular opacities can be after a perforating trauma or sometimes it can be due to side effects of some drugs the most important side effect can be of the drug like amiodarone sometimes even the drugs like pilocarpine or ecothiophate they can also present like this and these patients can be presented after a birth also so it can be a type of congenital cataract also okay so this picture is of the 
anterior lenticular opacities. Then this is a surgery which is going on where you are seeing. This is the phacoemulsification probe. This is the phacoemulsification probe. What it does is it goes inside, it basically cracks the nucleus and then aspirates it. Okay. And this instrument which you are seeing in my other hand, this is called phaco, this is called chopper. So what the chopper does is chopper basically breaks the nucleus and then your phacoemulsification probe basically eats the nucleus and the cortical material. That's how in a 2.5 to 2.8 millimeter we can remove whole of the cortical material as well as the nuclear material. What is left is a anterior capsule as well as the posterior capsule and then we put an intraocular lens there which is called a posterior chamber intraocular lens in the back. So sometimes you can have a congenital defect in the lens as well. So as I told you there can be defect in the iris similarly you can have defect in the lens. So if you can see in this area you are ha not having the lens this is called lens coloboma. Okay and as I told you after a cataract surgery we can put the lens beneath the anterior capsule and above the posterior capsule. So this is the physiological position of putting a intraocular lens here. Here I put an intraocular lens. This is called in the bag implantation. In the bag implantation and if you can appreciate the various rings here, these are the multifocal intraocular lens that we have put here. Okay, chal. Let's move to the next spotter. So this spotter is basically showing you a femtolaser assisted cataract surgery going on. So femtolaser which is a 1053 nanometer photo disruptive laser with 10 raised to power minus 15 as the frequency is one of the latest and the most advanced type of the cataract surgery. What it does is it can basically make the the anterior capsular axis it would cause the the nucleotomy the breaking of the nucleus into various parts and it can also cause the your incision in the cornea okay so these are the steps which can be done with the femtolaser assisted cataract surgery and this is also called a bladeless cataract surgery because the blade the keratome that we use to make a 2.5 millimeter entry into the cornea you do not need that you do not need a needle to make a capsular axis. So all these steps are basically done by the femtolaser. So it is also called a bladeless cataract surgery. Then this is a picture also courtesy my director Dr. Kamal sir. So this is a bull's eye sign which you are seeing here. So if you can appreciate this is the ring, the capsular ring which you are seeing and this capsular ring basically is the pseudo exfoliation material on the anterior capsule. This is called a bull's eye sign. Do not confuse a bull's eye sign with a bull's eye maculopathy. Remember whenever you have a bull's eye maculopathy it is basically there in the chloroquine toxicity. The bull's eye sign is in the pseudo exfoliation syndrome. This exfoliative material can be there in the other parts of eye as well. So it can be deposited on your the various zonules. It can be there on the iris. It can be there on the pupil. It can be there on your angles of the eye as well. So this is basically causing a pseudo exfoliative syndrome. The major problems in the pseudo exfoliation syndrome is that the patient can have the asymmetrical glaucoma. And it is the most common cause of secondary glaucoma in the Indian population. Second problem is that there is a non dilating pupil. So there would be chances of the complicated cataract surgery. The third problem is so zonules get weak and so there are many chances of the subluxation or the dislocation of lens. So these are some very very important points regarding the patient suffering from pseudo exfoliation syndrome. Okay. Then I would just show you another position of the intraocular lens. So I showed you a anterior chamber intraocular lens. This this is a Kelman anterior chamber intraocular lens. So where is the position? 
So let's say this is your iris and unfortunately there is a posterior capsular rent and you do not have the posterior capsular support. So if you put the intraocular lens behind the iris, it would fall down into the vitreous cavity. So in these conditions, what we do is we can put a intraocular lens in front of iris. How to differentiate? You can see the edges of the op optic as well as the haptic hair. So whenever I talk about an intraocular lens, there are two parts. One is from which the light goes that is called optic and the other part which basically fixates the lens to its tissue that is called haptic. Now whenever we put a posterior chamber intraocular lens, you can see just the center of the optic. You cannot see the haptic because they are behind the iris. But if you are able to see the haptics and they are in the front of iris, this is a anterior chamber intraocular lens. Very, very important. Also remember that this anterior chamber intraocular lens are not usually put because they can basically, because they are very anteriorly, they are over the iris. They can cause many complications like a UGH syndrome. What is UGH syndrome? It is uveitis, glaucoma and hyphema. And why this is happening? Because the anterior chamber intraocular lens, it can cause a pigment dispersal. Okay. Then this is a clinical picture of Elching pearls. If you can see there is a posterior chamber intraocular lens and if you can see some faculated structures, these are the equatorial cells which are there on the posterior capsule. So after an intraocular lens we have put, there are still, still some equatorial cells sometimes remaining in the equatorial region. And these cells can basically migrate to the posterior capsule and get opacified here. This phenomena is called Elching pearls or we also call it posterior capsular opacification. Now very easy to remove it. We just want to do a ND jag capsulotomy here to remove these Elching pearls. Then the next quarter is this one. If you can see this is your lens and these fibers which are you are seeing these are basically the ciliary zonules. These are the ciliary zonules and whenever you see uh, structures like this this is a crescent reflex which is there and this is the lens okay so there is a superior temporal subluxation and we remember that the superior temporal subluxation is there in the marfan syndrome okay then we can have sometimes a very hyper mature cataract and because of this a very high dense cataract this can also cause a subluxation which you can see here there is a inferior nasal subluxation Inferior nasal subluxation can be a phenomena which is seen in another syndrome which is called homocystinuria. So you can just go back and see my class on the ectopia lentis where I have discussed various type of the subluxation. Then in this picture you are also seeing the subluxation. It may be there after trauma. So you are seeing temporally you can see this reflex. Okay. So there are two reflex that are coming. One reflex is from the phacic part and other reflex is from the aphacic part. So this is the crescent reflex. So when you do a retinoscopy, you can get a retinoscopy from the phacic part and you can get a retinoscopy which is a very high because there is absence of lens there. So let's say plus 10 diopter from the aphacic part also. And because there are two retinoscopy values, the images are not basically focused at a single point. Sometimes you can get a monoocular diplopia also in this patient. Monoocular diplopia. A very, very important cause of the monoocular diplopia is your subluxation. Then I would be just showing you the difference between two images. So see this image and then see this image. So this image you are seeing a avascular heaved up conjunctiva here okay so this is basically not a vascular structure as compared to this structure which is basically encroaching the cornea so conjunctiva is growing over the cornea so this structure which you are seeing this is called pterygium and this structure which you are seeing this is basically called a pingicula okay 
do not confuse between a pterygium and a pingicula here okay so with this i come to the end of the session hope you would have liked the session so we have one more image based question in ophthalmology session left and that session would be on the tomorrow at the same time so till then good night from my side and if you want to wish more free videos from my side in the ophthalmology you can just subscribe for this channel that is the let's crack neat pg channel and hit the bell icon for the notifications thank you good night and jai hind